And here we are once again. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a D&D 5th Ed homebrew campaign uh, in which my players are playing heroes from a thousand years in the past of the previous uh, session, dealing with the... It's not the aftermath, is it the pre-math of <laughs> what they were dealing with in the previous campaign? Something like that. I'm Mark Dane Caffeinated One, GM, host, and uh, general busybody, trying to keep uh, everything uh, flowing and dangerous. I'm joined by my players, who are the ones who are trying to solve all the problems and foil my adversaries, starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh, cultist. Hi, my name is Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is a princess who definitely should not be in the shadow. I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric. And indeed, we are back in the shadow. Anybody who saw campaign one, there was an extended period of time in the shadow, not quite so extended potentially this time. But you're in this weird, hellish dimension, where in a massive creature, the lord of this uh, this uh, realm is, I guess, upset might be one way to put it, um, spewing out beams of light from his apparent eyes, opening portals to other places in search of something. One of these uh, was accompanied by a raid in the town of Eilthvater, where everyone draws from, uh, calls home, I guess, really. Uh, actually, none of you are from there, but all of you now call it home. Uh, as friends and uh, others were drawn through, one of the friends was Melora Cartwright, who had become uh, a pretty good ally to the party. had seen her through numerous things. Uh, and uh, finally, you managed to find a way to construct a gate and make it through to the shadow. When you arrived here, you found this barren land that seems to be encased in a massive cave. From no specific place glows red light, giving the entire place a, uh, a, a hue of blood and stone. Nothing but ruins and rocks, barely any signs of civilization. You started your search and found yourself stumbling upon a seemingly dead and yet not dead Rodolpo, a gnome of some confusion after uh, Rodolfo takes you to meet some of the locals who turn out to be uh, massive, misfigured giants uh, known as Fomorians, uh, you discover that Melora has been taken by the Dream Taker, a strange creature that seems to dwell here with some purpose, but also in opposition potentially to what the Fomorians are doing. They don't seem to be pleased with it. They say they cannot act directly against the Dream Taker, but if they will give you Rodolfo to try to guide you along the way. On the way to find the Dream Taker, you stumble across a couple of different things. An actual storm of despair. You cross across the remains of one thing that had been pulled through a, an active portal. You'd seen from a distance the Dream Taker swoop in and, as Rodolfo put it, feed on the people that came through. You also discovered on a far mountain, uh, you haven't gone there yet, but you saw the remains of a ship, at least half of the ship. Uh, you're not sure how it got there, especially when you were able to, at a distance, identify the ship as one that had belonged to an admiral in the Alarian Navy, uh, which perked some interest from uh, Annie, otherwise known as Princess Annelise of the royal family. But now you find yourselves um, standing in front of a very unexpected sight in the middle of this wasteland. Rodolfo uh, insists, I should say, Rodolfo now, uh, where, uh, what's his name, Philandrin. Uh, let me make sure I get his name right here. Philandrius, uh, after receiving a soul coin that you randomly discovered, transforming him from a gnome into a hobgoblin, Strangely enough, somewhat more capable, perhaps. But Philandrius insists that what you see before you is indeed the opening to the lair of the Dream Taker. But to all of you, it seems remarkably familiar and completely out of place to see the, the mansion of the Baron Baroness standing before you. In fact, 
Um, as you move closer to it, the ground even moves from being barren red rock and uh, brown soil and um, remnants of, of things and people gone by to greenish grass, although still cast somewhat within that red light. Um, you stand before this mansion. Now, as you look at it, it is familiar, but something isn't quite right. It's difficult to tell, but Annie, I'll allow you to make a perception check. As, you're, as the back of your mind uh, tickles with something that's not quite right, but not very apparent from where you are right now. Oh, that's not the right tab. Perception? Perception. DC 16 in this case. 18. 18. You look at it, and it's all the subtle details that don't seem right. And then you kind of look at it again and realize that all the subtle details are backward. It is as though the entire building is seen through a mirror. Now, you got to remember his name properly, Philandrius, not Rodolfo, um, stands with you, um, looking at you as to what to do. He does not seem thrilled with the idea of going in. There is a measure of fear, which even in his more bold hobgoblin form is still quite apparent. <clears throat> but he has indicated, if this is where you want, if you want to go see, sorry, it's, it's Philandrius now, if you want to go see the dream taker, he is within. It is within. They are within. What can we expect? From here, I do not know. I've never been inside the presence of the Dream Taker's own lair, just up to the edge of it and seen people taken in. Nobody that I've ever seen comes back out. Well, let us be the first ones, then. That would make sense why a lot of the... The only link that anybody could find between the actual things that were taken and the the only link was the the party mm. i will say well. too as you look around you see that the edges of this vision are somewhat obscured while you didn't notice it so much as you're walking in, now if you look at the sides or behind you, it is as though the outside world vanishes in a haze. Still there, but indistinct. Are we in a dream right now? I'll ask my compatriots and also uh, Philandrius. I mean, the details on the building are, are mirrored. Alas, I have not dreamed in many years, so I do not know if I would recognize one. I'll pinch Medrick. Ow. It hurts. <laughs> um, <laughs> Silas is going to change what he looks like to uh, a guy in a green mask with uh, hooded dark, dark green robes. Okay. Anything in particular you want to look like? Is that supposed to be reminiscent nope. of something? Or He's just... just not trying to look like a demon anymore, and he doesn't want to look like him, just in case. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, oh, somewhat used be... to the strange looks, you, your companions recognize it. Philandrius looks kind of strange at you, but... Well, we can probably expect some weird shit to happen. That's the least of it. Well... Let's we'll slowly go. walk forward. Okay. We head forward. Yeah, let's head on in. A familiar walk as before. This time, however, not accompanied by guards. You do not see any guards on the outside either. Even trying to look through the windows, it seems like the windows are slightly reflective and opaque, themselves not entirely unlike mirrors. The door is unlocked. The big double door is in front of you. Um... You open the doors, and again, that sort of hazy view of the inside, indistinct, um, and a sort of fog, a slightly blue-green-white fog, 
seems to manifest as you step through into the space um, you find the interior familiar once more uh, filled with fog limiting view and so I will I'll just put you slightly inside if I can there we go Hopefully you can all move your tokens. I don't know if I've tested that recently. Yep. So, um, while I'm not going to do Fog of War on this map, just simply because it's a lot of work, um, keep in mind that you can't see through walls, and even in open spaces, you find the fog limits your view to about 40 feet. So, first thing that you notice is that the interior, well, as... Annie had pointed out is flipped, is relatively familiar, with the exception of one thing in particular. There are on every wall, every doorway, and even the windows, hung mirrors of one shape or size or another. Some are large and ornate, standing five, six feet tall. Others are hand mirrors, simply laying on their side or propped up as if uh, 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 laid aside at one point. Um, they don't seem to reflect light as much as you might expect. The light itself is a sort of ambient glow from the fog, even uh, potentially. No sources of light seem to be here, unless you bring some of your own. Within the fog, you do see um, humanoid-shaped, darker shadow figures that seem to be standing around um, from... Five to ten feet away, you hear nothing more than the sort of occasional swish of the fog. Um, if you move any closer than that, you start to hear whispers of indistinct nature, um, gathering you to believe that these are individuals, perhaps, but of what form or shape or identity you do not know. What would you like to do? Do, do the figures notice us? They don't seem to react to you, no. At least not from where you open the door. I'll just have Philandria standing Are they active you. or are they just standing there? Have you observed them for a, a few seconds? You do notice that there are shifts in the shapes as if they are moving, not back and forth. They're standing in the same location, but almost the same sort of thing you would have someone talking animately, um, and moving hands, changing shoulders, turning and twisting, that sort of thing but not moving anywhere outside of their own spots. All right, hopefully we can get to Melora and get her out without a fight. These beings don't seem to be noticing us for now. Maybe they're all in their, in their own little world. So hopefully this keeps up. Now, just memory, when, when the, the switch in the ball happened, there was no flipping. It was a one-to-one -one in that scenario, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, now, looking at this guy that's this in front of me, is there any, is it just like, kind of like, stereotypical, like, blob? Or is it like, is there any, like, identifying features? Um, you can make... Uh, an investigation check to look for a little bit more. You find that as you move even a few inches closer, they do become a little bit more distinct. And as you move uh, closer still, you start to make out more solid form within the shadow. Um, it is almost the same effect of someone uh, seeing someone through a fog where they start out as an indistinct blob of of just darkness against the white, and as you move, as you move closer to them, more details come. Um, but in this particular case, as you step forward to take a closer look at this one in front of you, you feel almost as though the details themselves are eroding. Almost as though this one is less distinct than you might have expected getting this close. There is at times a moment where it does turn to you and you see the vague um, shape of what looks like a young man's face. 
young man in relative terms, uh, still probably in his 20s, um, hollow and indistinct. And while it turns to you, it doesn't seem to recognize you and turns back to talk to its companion. The language feels like it's common, but the words themselves are also blurry and indistinct. Well, that's a good sign. They don't care about us. Well, who wants a gut feeling that whatever we want to talk to is in the main room? It's do we want to poke around or do we want to go straight there? The main room sounds like a good idea. So we could poke around and end up getting dragged there. Yeah, where'd my window go? Okay, here it is. <laughs> the windows are covered with opaque fog, so you cannot find them on your desktop. <laughs> She's probably going to be held, I mean, either in the Baron's office in the basement maybe up in the big hall they had and now that we're in here can can the dream stealer feel if we've entered no idea probably i mean we're kind of in his domain some of I mean, you we have could poke, sorry. poke around some of you have supernatural senses as well you could try to employ or poke around Yep, poke around and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to go? We won't be doing round by round necessarily. Just kind of give me the general direction. Give me a remember, second. Like, what each My brain is from also trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Silas will approach that group of three and see if there's anything interesting about them. Okay. Uh, as you move closer, um, as I described for... Uh, for Annie, they do grow more distinct in shape and uh, in features. And as you move to that distance, the one on the far side, this one, mm -hmm. pulls in very distinct features, very familiar features to you um, as you recognize, perhaps with a start, uh, the person standing there, and I'm going to. Um, Is it? Replace them with a more familiar figure. As you recognize distinctly, with uh, the haughty bearing, perhaps that you're used to, the severe look upon her face, the very distinct and um, elevated voice that she always puts on. None other than Odiga, the eldest of your clan. And her voice is more distinct. Um, I won't try to do word by word, but as you're standing there, you start to hear her talk about the uh, great praise for the mother, how their plans will all come to fruition, how everything they ever thought possible will be possible, uh, how nothing can stand in their way. And there's a very proud sort of a series of associations. And then she looks over towards you as you come within view. And a puzzled look comes across her face. Silas? Odega? I did not remember you coming here. I thought you were away. And now you feel the two that are standing beside her as their attention turns to you. How are they looking? Just as indistinct as before, but there's a distinct sh uh, shift in the body shape so that the shoulders seem to come around and the head, still mostly an indistinct blob, um, does have that, that shadowy turn to it. So you can tell that they're looking towards you now. Um, but beyond that, there's not much detail. 
Do they look ghostly or solid? Both. Um, without trying to touch them, all you can see sort of is the shadowy outline that shifts and is not distinct. But every once in a while, there is a sort of distinct line of a solid object. Um, again, sort of like looking at someone through a fog or underwater or through, um, through, uh, soap bubbles even. Well, we'll walk around to this side and put a hand on Odega's shoulder or try to. Do you, do you actually walk through that one or try to, or do you walk around? No, around. Okay. Um, make a... Constitution saving throw. Difficulty 15. Wow. Not one. Wow. No. <laughs> My worst save. That is, that it, well, and rolling a nat one does not help. Um, as you reach out, um, you feel a resistance uh, as though you're trying to push through at first solid water, then solid ice. And your hand does not come close to her. She looks at you, though, and puts her hand towards yours and finds a similar resistance. I don't think you're supposed to be here. Is this your dream, aunt? No, this is a, is a glorious party that I've been invited to, in which I'm... Forging allies for the clan. I reach out telepathically and say, Are you truly here? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Okay, I'd say that works. Um, she looks at you quizzically and, uh, and, and, you know, furrows her brow. Of course I'm here. Where else would I be? Um, Is she you can... answering back in her head or in or audibly? Um, it's kind of both. You see her lips move, but you do hear the internal response as well. Um, you can make an insight check. Okay. With the 10. Um... She seems absolutely certain of what she's saying. Hmm. But Silas will head back to the others and that he th he thinks there are dreamers here, but he's I saw my aunt and tried to contact her mind to mind and it worked. So I th think my aunt's mind is here, but. And as you step away, you, you hear her resume her talk, um, essentially networking with the people that are there who's turned back to pay attention to her as you step kind of further away from them. Um, and seem mm. wrapped in attention to her. On the other hand, she's going back to what happened that night instead of realizing that this is a another place or a dream. Interesting. Well, do you want to spread out and search the building? We should probably stay together. Yeah, considering how, how much chaos splitting up last time we were in here caused. And if every party guest that was that were at the party that one night are still here then Melora should be one of these specters we should find her well I mean it might be her or it might just be a memory of her we don't know how this operates if you find her try to I mean try to con like, try to ask her if she knows she's in a dream maybe if that actually is her it'll break her out of it Sure. You well, I can try ascending together, when but... I'm standing in front of her. If she, if, if she responds something different, then... Yeah. Um, Mark, when I look back in Odega's direction now, is she still looking like Odega, or does she go back to looking like a phantom? 
from this distance pretty much looks like a phantom again, but you kind of pick out little bits of color and of shape that you would recognize as hers. So mm -hmm. now that you've seen her, you feel like you could see her again or make her out, but still not very far away. Yeah, I suspect that we'll see the ones that we had close connections to. But no, lead on. Annie, you feel a cold chill run down your spine. And a, a light voice in your head says, help. No, we missed one of the spiders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for, um, is it the voice that I heard last time? The, the maid's voice? Yes. Okay. And Silas can make a perception check. At disadvantage because it's kind of corner of the eye. 21. Nice. Nice. Second disadvantage. As you're as you're sort of talking about the, the plans that should go on, you kind of see Annie shiver a little bit. And at the corner of your eye, you see another shape, more distinct than the ones that are standing there, leaning out of the back of Annie with its arm held by the figure blob behind you. And it seems to be trying to resist this pull and is getting pulled out of Annie. There's a blob behind her? So that's there's one, one, that's there's one right, there's the okay. one right next to her. And I'm kind of assuming yeah. we turned away to talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there is a ghostly figure um, with a 21 a ghostly feminine figure, um, which is sort of leaning halfway out of Annie's back that seems to be pulled at by this figure here. I, I will mention that Silas is still keeping up his uh, his magic site. So um, this place is pretty much suffused with magic. So there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing different from background, if you will. Yeah. It'll just be reading the aura of the area. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll try to focus on the voice. What's going on? I'm going to zap the spirit. Which yeah. one? The one that's doing the yanking. Okay. Whatever the other, whatever the other spirit is, it's in Annie. It's probably supposed to be there. She's not acting that weird right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, he'll just, uh, he'll Eldritch bolt the, the one that's trying to take something out of Annie. Okay. Um, for you, Annie, uh, sorry, what did you ask? Uh, I want to make sure I address that. Uh, I'm I'm trying to focus in on, on the voice and asking what's going on. Okay. Help, help from what? Um, the answer you get, uh, just as your companion beside you lights up the, the area, uh, is, um, it's trying to keep me here. I think it thinks I'm like them. Go ahead and roll your attack. Um, it's technically a disadvantage because you're standing right beside it, but... Um, How many times did 16, you roll there? 15, okay. Three. Six, it's oh, right. Sorry. Oh, three. 16, 15, and 16, eight. 15, okay. and uh, natural one. So the, the natural mm -hmm. one misses. The other two easily hit. Uh, um, it's 11 force damage. And you see the, the bolt kind of not so much hit something solid as get caught up in this sort of internal whirlwind of the fog. And start to 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 uh, uh, shock it from multiple directions, like an like a little miniature tornado. Yeah, it looks like Silas sends out like three glowy bluish green tentacles that then slap fight with the ghost. <laughs> it does let go of uh, of the figure, um, which slips back into Annie quite quickly, um, and you notice that. The one I'm going that you, to take a step away. <laughs> fair enough. It's not going to try to snag you at that point. The the figure that you hit um, seems even less distinct than before. Um, in fact, it's almost as though elements of its darker fog uh, shred outward 
and dissipate into the larger fog. But after that, and after Annie steps away from it, it seems to turn and go back to the, the other one that it was chatting with. It doesn't seem to pay you any attention. Well, that's new. Yeah. Do you feel strange, Annie? Possibly possessed? I don't know. Any strange spiritual thoughts or communications or anything? I mean, like, just not too long ago, I saw you surrounded by a shadow of something. And now I see a woman being pulled out of a spirit of a woman being pulled out of you by this other spirit guy who now is ignoring us. But do I see that too, by the way? Or I'm assuming yes. Yeah, I think you could have easily witnessed everything that's going on there. You're that close. Yeah, I see that too. Um, do you we all didn't, have a you... spirit inside us? I, I, I've been hearing a, a voice out of nowhere and suddenly have the ring that's supposed to shield my mind on again after taking it off a few times. Is it back on? To take it off. Anytime I take it off, it goes back on, so I stop trying. And when you hold up your hand, it is indeed on your finger. It's probably good that it's on then. I have a feeling mind shielding will come in handy in this area. I'm not attuned to it. It just keeps showing up back on my hand. Okay. Uh, I, I will point out, I find it amusing that the cleric was asking the question of, do we have a spirit inside of us? Hey, Dark Spook. You know what I mean. <laughs> Spare, <laughs> I guess. Hey, maybe we have a bonus we spirit. It doesn't involve souls. Um, and we already uh, established that the that dude last session thought that said that I had something else going on. Mm. Stylus is going to reach out with his mind and ask Annie, can you hear this? <laughs> um, I answer back, yes. Yeah, you hear it quite clearly. Silas is going to try again, except slightly to her left, <laughs> and see if he can get the other spirit um, let's make this an arcana roll to kind of target the spell in a way that's not obvious. Oh yeah, there you go. 20, 21. 21. So as you kind of reach out and it's, the power is, is kind of automatic most of the time. Um, it's become natural to you. So trying to target it is that same sort of thing of suddenly thinking about every step you take and that sort of stumbling motion that most people have when you start to consciously do it. Um, but you feel like you're able to sense the, the mind of Annie, first of all, the one you just contacted and then kind of push beyond that. Um, what are you saying? Can you hear this? Um, Annie, please make a wisdom saving throw. Difficulty 15. Oopsie. <laughs> 11. From Annie's mouth, but not in Annie's voice, you hear, yes, I can, in a timid female voice. Still through her voice box, was so still technically her voice, but definitely a different timbre, different cadence. Stylus will quickly ask, who are you? Um, now, Annie, you realize that this came out of your mouth and you didn't do that. Do you want to resist this happening or do you want to let this happen? I'm going to let this happen because I'm curious. I'm confused. I don't do the magic stuff. I'm letting mm -hmm. the magic people do the magic stuff. Okay. Then you have that really weird sensation of if you've always been a driver in a car and suddenly you're sitting in the back seat, it is super weird because you, you're kind of instinctively lean. You instinctively want to turn and tap the brake or gas at the times when you go around corners and so forth. And learning to undo that or unlearning to do that um, is a little tricky. So there is a few moments in here, I think, when the voice comes through Annie's mouth 
the expression on the face does not match the voice or the expression in the, in the, in the voice. Um, but eventually it becomes a little bit easier to relax and not instinctively fight against this, uh, this, um, this thing that's happening. Um, can you repeat the question just cause I went a little farther than I went to there? Uh, he just asked, who are you? My name, sir, is Meredith. I don't know if I should be talking to you, sir. Why are you in Annie? Well, sir, as much as I can imagine and understand, I'm not sure that I am. But I think Miss Annalise is in me. Are you here with us, or are you at some other location seeing through Annie? Well, I, I don't know about such things, sir, but so far as I can tell, I am here and nowhere else. I'm not sure if I would know if I were somewhere else, too. If you look down at yourself, do you see yourself or do you see Annie? Annalise. And you, you feel the head kind of moving and your arms and your body posture moving, Annie. And it's, again, that, that weird sensation of, I'm not doing this, it's just happening. And yet at the same time, there is a sort of internal sensation of, no, no, I'm doing this. It's happening, yeah. Um, I'm the one suddenly slightly slouching, which is odd. <laughs> And there, there is, in fact, there's a tilt of the head and the, 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 the neck goes down a little bit in terms of kind of almost a deference to, uh, to Silas and, uh, Annie's body looks down and, and holds your hands out. It does not look like my fingers, sir. Mine are much more worn. My nails not so nearly nicely done. The hands are strong. Mine might be stronger. How do you know Annalise? Well, I've served her family for many years, sir. I have known her for quite some time, although I must suggest that she has no notice of me. Mm, that is apparent. You say that you think that she is in you, but when you look, you see her body. Yes, but I have been known to look different before. What do you mean? It's hard to say, sir. Much of my life I've spent trying not to tell people about my, na my nature and form. It's changeable, sir. You're a shapeshifter? I don't like such vulgar a term, but it has been the one I've heard before. So it's not just an illusion to make you look different uh, like this, and Silas will basically change it so that it's a red cloak now and like a, a wolf mask. No, sir. I can do not about clothes. Just my body. Her body Interesting. now. So you're saying that this is not Annalise's body? The... And there's a lot of hesitation. It is well understood that all that exists within the kingdom is that of the king, queen, and royal family. So this is nothing more than another part of the kingdom. Are you saying that this is not Annalise's body? I 
I don't rightly know, sir. But you think it is your body? I'm not really sure. I think at once it might have been. Well, the rich do often take things that are not theirs. <clears throat> How do you, what do you think, Annie? I had realized that, what was her name, Meredith, um, was no longer around the palace at one point in time. But I thought nothing of it. Maids change all the time. As far as I'm aware, I am me. If I try oh. to think back, there's nothing that would cause me to think that I am not me. Make a wisdom saving throw. Difficulty 18. Oof. 19. 19. Oh, wait. There was this. As you say that, and you start to drag up your memories, which is less organized than every other writing or, or a description of psychic power would be. But nonetheless, we'll, we'll assume it's something like rifling through paintings and old photographs. And as you sort of hone in on this notion and Meredith and so forth, you find resistance that you did not expect. Um, you find the image in your mind of Meredith, who you can now see clearly, stands a little taller than you, much thinner, always dressed plainly, but appropriately, always deferent. Um, often the person that would be there uh, attending to indirect needs, so the people that would uh, you know, make up your rooms, clean up your baths, but not the people you directly dealt with very often. But that clear image of her stands in front of a box. It looks like a stone box about three feet by on a side. And in your mind, you see yourself standing in front of her. And she looks at you pleadingly. Please, ma'am. This body is yours to do what you will. You do not need... I think, to know further. Now, with that role, you're not only aware of this, you know that you can push her aside and open up the box. I will. Actually, yeah, I will. She's too curious. Okay. See if I have those particular notes, or I'll do it from memory. I'll do it from memory. And when Annie's curious, it's okay. When Silas is curious, it's the world ending. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guarantee I'm this isn't world ending. I'm not trying. <laughs> I'm not trying to bring a deity of some sort to this plane. <laughs> That's less curiosity and mission, more mission, really. Um, you you mentally uh, brush Meredith aside and. And she does not offer resistance so much as, as at this point, so much as caution and concern. And that, that, in this mental landscape I'm describing, that radiates clearly. And you feel that in this, in this weird sort of inverted way, you feel it in your own body and bone. You feel it as, you know, the same physical reaction you would have to feeling that, that, that frisson of, of, of fear and uh, and concern when you've had it for other people. And you stand before the stone box. The, there is like a slight hesitation when I reach to it, but but I am still going to go towards the box. Okay. Um, as you approach the box and open up its lid, it moves easily, although it has weight to it. And the weight you can interpret almost as that weight of concern layered over time, that weight of, of protectiveness layered over time. Um, but it moves easily enough 
and you find yourself falling headfirst into the box. And then you find yourself standing on one of the parapets, one of the, the uh, parapets of your castle back in, uh, back in, uh, I think Curazon is the, is the city. I'll have to look that up at some point. It is, it starts with maybe Caravel. Paravel. Paravel. Okay. Well, I get there eventually. Um, it's a beautiful day. A little bit chilly. Uh, a little bit uh, of of a uh, of a fog covering the ground level. It's one of the bell towers as well, and the the bell has been rung for the day. The bell um, handler has gone. Um. And describe for me what would be a thing that Annie has to go think about that a place like this might be of of interest to her. What would be on Annie's mind? It could be any kind of thing from weighty state matter to, you know, does a boy like you to, does a girl like you to, are you living up in your training? Whatever comes to mind for, for you. I, I think that, that last one, am I living up to my training, like... Am I like ready? Should anything happen to do what I need to do? Men mental existential crisis of like, can I do this? Okay. Tell me when Annie got the ring. She has it by this point. So when did it come in? Was it something of a gift a year ago? Was it something your your uh, uh, governess had given to you? I think that was where it came from, but I want to make sure. So it was sent to me by the governess after I left. After you left, okay. Um, in this memory, it is on your finger. And you're not sure how those two things can be reconciled. There is a noise from behind you. And as you spin around, a six inch long red dagger is plunged into your stomach. It took you by surprise. You heard nothing up to that point, And you find yourself falling backward into the central shaft of the bell tower some 15 floors. And then everything goes black for a second. That's the end of that memory. I can fill in a little bit from there. And everything shifts. You see yourself lying at the bottom, broken. Your body has no life. You see Meredith step forward. A shocked look on her face. leans over you and takes that ring the ring disappears on her hand and she stands up there's a look on her face of puzzlement as you're able to walk around this scene and you're feeling both the external point of view and the internal at this point. There's a resignation, a vow, if you will, internally. And she holds her hands up in front of her, of her body. And from the hands outward, with the invisible ring, you see her body shift to be an exact copy of the one that lies in front of you. Still wearing the maid's clothing, 
but it looks identical to you. Then she looks down at her own hands, sighs, and drags the body away, your body away. Just outside of that bell tower, in a small copse of trees, she's able to dig a very shallow grave with a hard stone that she found and pile stones on top of it as a small cairn. She goes back to the castle, and you feel the body shift again to the familiar shape of Meredith. Goes into the servant's entrance, no one questions a thing. Goes into your rooms, changes into an outfit you would typically have, and lies down in your bed. And the next memory you have is of waking up, feeling exhausted, having a headache in your bed. Not long after that, you set to sea. That's, that's happy. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I've seen rings like this before. I knew what it might mean. I did not mean to steal it. That was not my intent. My intent was to hopefully save you. I had hoped to fade away, to be nothing more than a forgotten memory. But there are things which have reached me, awakened me once more. I'm sorry, ma'am. Did they find who? Did you see who did this to me? No. And even in your own memory, they're wearing all black their face is covered. The only detail that really sticks out, and it's one of those things that happens in the in the instant of crisis, is you latch on to small details, is this six-inch long red dagger. Not one you'd seen before. Is this an internal discussion, or is this like a Smeagol and Gollum <laughs> talking out of the same uh, it... face thing? I think up to the point in which Annie says, did you see who did this? It's internal. But at that point, it starts to become the dueling facial conversation outside. Unless Annie does something particularly to silence or to drag it back inside. But up to this point, you've seen her kind of stare off into the distance. I think that you're, the, even without trying, your body does react to the motion of being stabbed in the, in the gut. And so there is a sort of wince and a, and a tightening of the stomach and a hand probably put to the, put to the spot where you were stabbed um, that others have seen, others see outside. But There's you... also probably some tears. I can imagine so. We probably would have asked, are you okay? But she may not have heard it at that point. Well, now we have something else to figure out. Huh? Thank you for sharing this. I'm sorry to make your life harder. I know how difficult it has been to be you. I, I know it more than most. But I will fade away. Do not be concerned. I am nothing more than your servant. No. Don't. We'll figure this out. As you wish, ma'am. Well, that's another thing that we need to figure out now. Who killed me? Uh, Annie? What? Does that mean you're a shapeshifter now? 
I don't know. And I'll say that you can you can still sense Meredith. Um, Meredith has literally and psychically moved herself out of your immediate range, but it's, it's, it's like the, like a nagging thought in the back of your mind that if you pay attention to, uh, can come more to the fore to your mind. Something to discover later. Yeah. We probably need to focus on this for now. Back to where we were. Wait, what do you mean who, what do you mean who killed you? You're, you're alive, you're right there. No, I was killed. Most of us here are dead, ma'am, says uh, uh, Philandrius. It's usually how we come to be here. He doesn't seem to be nearly as, as surprised or bothered by, this, by the suspicion that someone here is dead. But that might be his perspective. Silas leans over to this... Medrick and says, She's a body snatcher. What? I think she's not in her own body. Annalise's soul is... In the ring, I'm guessing from what she said. But this body is not Annalise. Well then. Maybe that's why the ring keeps attaching itself to you. That would make sense. All right. Definitely I you not take it off later. again. <laughs> yeah. Although you could take it off and like put it on Medric, that would be interesting. Oh god. It probably doesn't fit. <laughs> it's a magic ring, it'll be his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what you do with it is your own prerogative. This is why we give things to players to let them try to do weird things. Sign this bolts out a notebook. Come on, just try it once. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, we will figure that out later. Focus on finding Melora. Well, I could resurrect you via the power of Ignis eventually, though. Just FYI. So do we want to check out a specific spot, or do we just want to wander around? Do I recall where Melora was hanging out at the actual party? She went to the worst places. Okay. Yeah. And at one point she's, she's been dragged around by you guys, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, she she might be at one of the, the sort of rooms of power, like the Baron's office, some other place that was important during the party. For, what, or for where we were there, but... Well, she's probably not in the room with the vines. Hard to say. Uh, let's check out the game room. And I'll make my way to the game room. Okay. Um, you can assume that the doors aren't closed or locked yeah. here, at least to the ones on this floor. Um at some point, you might try one of the doors, the side doors. You will find that they lead to nothing, literally, lead to an open void filled with, uh, with uh, fog. In this room, you see four of those uh, wisps, and almost moving like they're playing cards. But every time they kind of throw a card that would leave their hands, it kind of vas uh, uh, evaporates into a uh, a. Um, a gas or into an, another wisp of, of fog. Um, once again, you find most of them to be extraordinarily indistinct. Um, and you can make a, let's say a religion roll on this. Actually. All right. Damn it. Roll 20 has changed. Dice roller. Yes. <laughs> no. Religion is... 
Plus two, okay. There's a seven. Okay. Um, with the recent um, discovery that both in this place and possibly with your friend Annie, souls move around a lot. Um, you're not really sure how to interpret the fact that three out of the four in front of you seem to be almost non-corporeal, more than just the wispy. Um, it's almost as though their entire being is not even represented. If you look at an arm, then quickly look at their leg, it takes a moment for the leg to come into uh, any sort of solidity, um, almost as though your attention is in fact dragging the small amount of whatever this person is to be representative in that moment, except for one. Um, the one in this corner seems to be a little more substantial than the others. Which one? I had the screen up. Uh, this one right here seems a little bit more familiar than the others. And as you move close to her, um, we go to the level, get that. It comes into much more solidity as you recognize Celia. Celia Ohms is, uh, was at the party. Uh, actually, I believe was a wooden duck. Okay. It was her mask. And she was the daughter of Nichetto Ohms, who was the carpenter's guild master. Uh, herself a skilled carpenter as well. And she had actually been the one to carve the mask. Um, and she seems to be talking, as you get closer, uh, business-like. Uh, about, uh, uh, you know, how many uh, board feet of, of squared off boards they need for a new project. Uh, how many, how they're expanding into building uh, more than furniture. And actually looking to take on... Uh, warehouse and house building. So it, it feels very much like uh, a business conversation, like she's uh, working a deal here. Okay. And she kind of looks up at you. Um, you're the I'll just nod. flame Doctor. keeper, right? I am indeed. I understand you have some business that needs to be done. We need to talk. Uh, maybe once I'm done here. All right. Uh, have you seen Melora by any chance? Uh, who? Melora. The one I came here with? Oh, a cart the Cartwright ride. girl. I don't think so. And there's a very vague look on her face at that point, almost as though she's looking around and kind of seeing everything for them for uh, the first time. Um, I, you've probably had that experience where you're so tired, you sit down, and then you kind of wake up a little bit later, and you're not really sure where the hell you are because you for, you yes. didn't realize you fell asleep, and you kind of see that pattern play across her face for a moment. Um, I mean, if she's still here, I'm, I'm sure you'll find her and turns okay. back to the table. Continues right, talk her discussion. To you later. I'll whisper to a uh, Medric, uh, wow, words. I'll, I'll whisper to Silas and, and Annie. Do you guys recognize any of the, any of the other ones? That was Celia, but like, I can't tell what, who the other ones are. I'll try to take a look. Okay. I'll get out of your way. Are are either Silas or any uh, trained in religion? Mm, okay, not me. Think no. Okay. And as you step into the room, uh, the same sort of thing happens. The other three remain uh, indistinct. Um, Celia comes into view, um, kind of gives you a nod, but continues to talk business. Um, if you interrupt her, she might turn to you, but you get the feeling that she's kind of dismissed you at the corner of her eye. Um, given that the position in town that you typically have is working for the, uh, the police essentially working for the guard. Um, so you're not really perhaps an economic target for her. That seems to be the focus of what she's doing right now, but she does acknowledge you at least. And she seems as you get close and, and. It's one of those cases where two or three feet away, she seems as solid as a person for the most part. Any further than that, and, and the fog takes over, and the shadow reforms, and only glimpses can be made. Like stepping into a, in a spotlight, almost. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah, so some I was just trying to see if I could see the recognize the other three and I'm just gonna go. Oh. Leave leave now. Feel free to ask Sorry. questions or, or to clarify things. Um Silas. Do I because because I know that we did go into this room at one point mm -hmm. um searching for I I think we were looking for a piece of goo that was underneath the table or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Um do I remember who else was in the room with her at that time? Um, you don't remember seeing Celia in this room before. Okay. Um, and the, throughout the night, different people had kind of come and gone into different places. It's a little disorienting with the room being backwards from what you remember it. Um, you might look to where you had found that uh, concealed package. You do not find anything there. Um, in fact, as you kind of look, that spot of the room looks relatively indistinct. As in almost like they've rubbed out the details or it never quite comes into full view. Even the cards on the table, as everybody's still going through the motions of playing cards, picking up cards, the actual table never seems to change. And none of the cards are readable. It just looks like squiggles. Does Silas recognize any of the other three? Um... Again, as you get closer, nothing seems distinct about them. Unlike with Celia, who seems to still be uh, or is whole, the others have this weird, as you pay attention to a part, it becomes slightly more solid, but still mostly shadow. And out of the corner of your eye, you can see that other parts are not solid. As if attention is driving what little remains of them to be here. I wonder if the the entity that runs this place is feeding off the spirits, and that's why a number of them are less substantial. Hmm. Either I'm way, if, she's not here, so. Or I wonder if it's pulling all this out of our memories. I don't think it's pulling stuff from our memories. I think it's pulling stuff from their memories. You I do remember know. that one of the things that many of the people at the party were talking about was the sort of getting a chance to do deals, getting a chance to to uh, to work the room, to get to know each other. Because that's why the, the Baron took people into the office that one time. There were a couple of different conferences that happened. The Baroness also took other people into a secret conference. Well, should we try the next room? Yep, we should get we should get moving. Okay. All right, and I'll go to the next room. All right. As you move up there, and as especially Silas, who was the one who talk, spoke to Odiga before, moves by, um, you notice Silas that Odiga is no longer there. And there's nothing in her place. Well, maybe she just went to the washroom. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Uh, in this room, there is another, as you kind of pay attention to the what you can look for now. Um, you know that you can, as you get close, there is a distinct difference in them. Um, you do, in fact, um, realize that the person here... Um, does have a solidity to them. Um, and it's a, a face that you remember, a person you remember, who you did not see at the party. It's a young woman. Uh, sorry, it's a middle-aged woman um, who the last time you had seen, I believe, uh, either she, I don't think she was performing, but I think she was certainly encouraging her kids to perform on stage. But the biggest thing you remember about Harriet Frey is when you spent time out at the lighthouse and how it was attacked. And indeed, you see uh, Harriet there talking uh, animately uh, to the others that are there who seem to be uh, facing what would be a fire if there was a fire in there, uh, even to, to the point where they occasionally hold out their hands as if warming by the fire. And she's talking about uh, uh, kind of... Um, what would she be describing at this moment? I think at this point she's she's 
kind of just probing them for information, um, asking about um, uh, books and uh, uh, education, um, probably looking for something for Henry and, uh, and uh, oh shoot, I forgot her name for the moment. Um, I know who you're talking about, but I also forget her name. <laughs> Did not mean to put my microphone. <laughs> no worries. Um, who will find it first? Uh, Esther. Okay. Henry and Esther, her two kids. Yes. Um, as you remember, Esther was book crazy. And Henry was just a boy that was getting into everything. And it sounds sure, like she's asking yes. about... Um, She's apologizing because she can't afford a private tutor, but she's looking for something that she can uh, bring to them. And that seems to be her conversation there. Do I recognize the other ones? Uh, again, there's nothing distinct as you move closer to okay. them. Um, Esther, or sorry, uh, Harriet does recognize you, though, and with a, a bit of a start and a smile. Um, she seems very Harriet. excited to uh, to see uh, you, Medrick. It's been a while. I hope things are yeah, going really. well. I didn't expect to run into you here. Yeah, there. The temple is growing slowly. I haven't been. I, I promise I will, and I'll take the kids in to see it as well. I'm sure that uh, Jonas would would love to uh, see the ever-burning flame. Actually, to be honest, oh, no Henry would as well. It would be nice to see you guys, though. Yeah, it's how, been how the busy. Kids? Good, good. Driving me up the walls, um, but they're good kids. Um, Henry has taken to longer walks in the woods and often comes back with interesting rocks and sticks. Nice. Make sure he's careful, though. The woods are not safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I worry about him a lot. Just hoping that I can find something for him to do. But. How do you find the party? Party? I didn't realize you'd be here. What party? Well, this party right here, right now, it's going on all around us. This is a store. Uh, there's no party here, as far as I know. <laughs> unless uh, you folks, uh, she turns to the other two, unless you folks are uh, planning on throwing something. I'm just in for supplies today. Figured I'd take a little advantage of uh, seeing some folks here that might know a few things about keeping kids busy. Gotcha. Well, it was a party... In the other room, anyway. I didn't realize this building was What's... that big. You mean the storeroom? What store is this? Um, and she rattles off the name of a, of a general store in town. It's one of those places that, that sells uh, quite literally like soup to nuts, uh, but like does also safe. do, commi not commissions, but it's also one of the places you can receive packages. Um. And it's known as kind of the place where people will also come just to jabber for a while. They sell roasted nuts, which is also one of those things where they sell them by the bag and people come in, buy a bag of nuts, and just chat. So if it's you... like the one general store in a small town, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of, of general stores here, but but it's it's one of those type. You guys have a name for it? I'm open to a name. I didn't name it, so. Mm -hmm. God, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember the name of that same store that's in Boys Town, <laughs> where they sell everything, and it's the general store. That's gonna call it Burke's <laughs> Works. <laughs> Burke's Works. Okay. Burke's Works. He sells everything. Burke's Works. I could call it Scoop and Save, but then we'd have to like go after them to sponsor <laughs> our show. <laughs> or at least not sue us for using the name. Yeah. Um, so totally not that place at all. It's Burke's Works. Um, and you, you probably, uh, probably more Annie than Medrick has been in there from time to time. Any more in terms of you've been, you know, patrolling the town. So you've gone into most establishments at least once. Uh, maybe you didn't bother buying anything, but you probably do, did see some of the locals there. And looking around, yeah, it does kind of look like that. Not exactly. But you could kind of imagine someone mistaking it for that. Right, mm. works, works. And thinking back to the previous room we were in, was that an actual party or was did it, did it look like something else? 
I mean, as far as you could tell, it did look like the mach- the uh, the game room in the other building in the in the manor. Um, there's not a lot distinct there. It certainly didn't have that same special decor of, uh, you know, some sort of spiritual bomb under the table. But you know, most places don't. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, uh, I won't keep you. I'll go to the other room. I'll be sure to be by the temple. And her Looking voice fades when you get more than five feet away, and her attention completely drops out of uh, away from you. And the other two see her turn back to the other companions. Silas well, is going to weird. Silas yeah, is going to go up to her. Uh, what was her name again? Harriet. Harriet. Uh, Silas will walk up and say, "Harriet." Uh, she starts. Because you're wearing a mask and a red uh, cloak and not necessarily he'll, looking like Silas, but she definitely he'll, starts uh, with he'll, surprise. He'll, and he'll, quickly t- he'll quickly have the mask disappear. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Marsh, I didn't recognize you. You looked terrifying. Hmm. Damn it. What was her name again? Harriet. Harriet. That's it. Uh, he looks at it. Harriet. And he, ca- uh, he stares her in the eyes and uh, uses suggestion, which he gets uh, once a day for free. Wow, okay. Is there a save Go on to... that? Uh, yeah, it's just like the spell is normal. Uh, okay. It would be a wisdom save. Go to sleep. Uh, that's probably about right. Uh, rolls an 18. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, beats my... Uh... Spell save. Okay. Uh, um, she kind of looks at you deep in the eye, and then the the a smile breaks across her face. Well, that's a uh, um, uh, not the most polite way of saying I look rather tired, but uh, I'll get my rest whenever I can. But thank you, Mister Marsh. Uh, what do we get? Yeah, my save fifteen. Um. Harriet just well, happens to be strong-willed in this particular moment, I guess. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, he'll give it another try. And he'll cast it using a spell slot. Okay. No, I mean it really. Go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. A, he goes, Harriet, go to sleep. Uh, and I think that that smile is still on her face. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With your rolls of 17. Um, it's like, honestly, I, I'm, 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 I'm gratified that you feel so strongly about my well being, Mr. Marsh, but I get plenty of sleep. Sometimes I have to take the night watch so I don't get all the sleep I could, but, um, says, you are amazingly strong-willed. And he puts his hands on either side of her head and says, but go to sleep. And he uses his other warlock slot, because okay. why not? Uh, uh, so let's not get into fights, so because we were told that the, the resources take a long time to replenish. Silas. <laughs> no, really. There we go. Okay. And I this time with know. the insistence... Um, there's sort of a, a look that crosses her face of confusion. Her eyes close. And she vanishes. Silas so turns around to, I thought so. Well, okay. Interesting. Now, uh, meanwhile, Medrick has stepped into the other room nearby. Um, sees three people that seem to be they seem to be eating. Um, no food changes on the table whatsoever. But as they uh, as they um, lean in and kind of have a bit of food, there's a sort of non-distinct bowl that kind of moves with them. Uh, and this time is now knowing what to look for. Um, you can easily recognize that this person here um, seems to be more substantial than the others. Um, it is a, a, a very large, solid-looking um, 
uh, black man, I think probably older than you, um, fairly muscular, wearing very simple clothing. Um, there's a, a hat on his knee that he probably took off so he wouldn't offend people as he eats. Um, kind of somber looking, doesn't talk much. Um, not really having a conversation with the others so much as, as leaning over a, a bowl of, looks like stew or soup maybe. Okay. Kind of nods at you, uh, when you come close, uh, acknowledging you, but doesn't really say anything else. You don't recognize, recognize him. him. No. Okay. Not somebody you've met before. Is this one of the rooms that had a thing under, under the table? I believe so. I can't check at the moment, but I believe okay. this did have one that was in the middle underneath the table. I think that was this room. All right, greetings. Uh, I'll be on my way soon. I just got to do an inspection and I'll look under the table. <laughs> all right. The underneath of the table is almost nothing at all. Um, it's almost as though you're you're peeling back the surface of the illusion and looking down. And there's there's not even there's not even legs or really an underside of the table. It's all just that sort of fog. Um, and as you kind of push your hand in, you do feel it sort of solidify where your hand is, but you don't notice any sign of that of the bomb you'd found before. All right, the table is solid enough. Mm-hmm. Have That's a good it. lunch, sir. All right. It's very, very taciturn. Says almost nothing. And I'll, I'll just relay my. I'll just relay what happened, like to Silas and Annie. Okay. And I'll so, ask, like, do do any of you guys recognize this guy? Because I, I haven't seen him before. When you step back in the room, you do notice that Harriet is gone, and the other two seem to be just sitting there quietly amongst themselves, facing the fire. Where did Harriet go? I told her to go to sleep. To sleep. And she Wait, so everybody who's here right now is currently dreaming, is what you're saying? I, yeah. I mean, this is the dream taker. I think the people, I mean, at least the people that we can talk to in here are dreaming. I don't know what the phantasms are. Maybe they're people that he trapped here in the dream and he's feeding off of because we were told that he grabs people from the portals and feeds off them. Maybe this is how... Or maybe he just right. feeds on people who are dreaming and just lets them wake up again. I hope so, anyway. <laughs> um, you yeah. can make a religion maybe that's check. what happens when you, right. like, when you, you, you know you slept the correct amount of hours, but still are tired. Well. Okay. It occurs to you, uh, Medrick, that it's one thing if the dream taker can feed off people who are here. It's quite a different one if he can somehow interface with dreams in the mortal plane. Which I'm assuming is what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he. I think everything that's in here is from the perspective of the people who were at the party, maybe. That's why okay. we're not finding bombs under it, because, I mean, for, most of the people didn't see any of that. that Although, I mean, Harriet, when she was here, thought the place was a store, so... Mm -hmm. And you don't remember seeing Harriet at the party? No, she wasn't no, there. No, because it, it was the, the old man. Yeah, Angus. Yeah. Yeah. But at least we know that, I mean, there there can be a way to send them out if we need to. Okay. Although I'm not sure how many more I can do. Let's find Melora then. Yeah. And I'll just keep going up the hall. Okay. You do ask the others about the uh, fellow you had seen. Um, he does not seem familiar to either one of you directly. I will say that um, uh, Annie can make, um, let's call it an investigation check. Um, investigation. Which is kind of the, the background kicking in, if you will, or the, the job, the day job kicking in. Twelve. Okay. Um, you don't remember him directly or distinctly, but he looks like someone you'd seen uh, coming off one of the fishing boats. Okay. I mean, could be a fisherman. Do I recognize him? Hmm, actually, I most of the fishermen. That's true. Um, I think once Annie says that, um, 
it does clue in that you have seen him before. He tends to be one of these people that stays out more often than in. So you don't see him very often. Um, go ahead and make a... Hmm. We'll call this investigation with advantage. Oof. Okay. Good advantage. <laughs> um, yeah. You, you, you drag up his name, uh, Tassilo. Um, so you kind of oh, have... Yeah, I've spoken to Tassilo. You've... Uh, you've uh, That's a name that I re re actually recognize. Is it? I, yeah. I didn't think I had used that name before, but that's okay. If you have, you have. Perfect. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll say between the two of you, you kind of figure out, oh yeah, that's one of the fishermen. He's out at sea most of the time. You don't see him at shore. I think his name is Tassilo. Um, and you're fairly certain that if you saw him again, you'd be able to recognize him. Uh, I'm assuming that you both get close enough to actually see him. Yeah. Um, and again, he kind of acknowledges you, but he's just eating a soup. Uh, in fact, he reaches the bottom of the soup and you see him vanish. Hmm. I wonder. Well, let's keep going. Okay. Yep. Nod. Uh, Medrick's kind of pushing forward a little bit. And once you get there, you can see both uh, into, on the right-hand side, um, what some of you, I don't know if all of you had seen it, but recognize as the meeting room, the private meeting room that people had gone into. I think maybe you all had. Um, there are a number of people sitting around that table. Um, from this distance, you can tell that this person that's right by the door uh, is of that indistinct nature. You can't tell anything about the other two. Um, looking left, however, you see a number of figures, uh, including one very close to the door right here, um, who seems to be much more distinct. And across the room, despite the distance, um, Medric, you see the Baroness in absolute clear distinction, um, smiling a little bit, uh, imperiously, sitting on her chair, and watching you with intent eyes. Hey, the Baroness is there, you guys. I'll just walk in slowly. Okay. And I will is say that uh, right here, um, this one uh, is... Looks like a, a dwarven gentleman standing there um, talking. Have I seen him before? Um, he does not look familiar, um, but he takes note of you when you come in and kind of gruffly nods. There's no real, he's not really chatting that much, so much he's sort of sitting there kind of pondering something or other and uh, sees you and kind of nods. I'll just do the bro nod back. All right. Bro nod accepted. <laughs> Um, as you get closer to those ones, uh, Medric, they do not seem to be as distinct. They seem to be of that other kind. What does this room look like? Is it a party room or is it just a store or a restaurant? This <laughs> resembles the main uh, hall at the uh, at the manor. This is where the, the the bulk of the party actually was. Up again, at the top, you can actually see, still see because it's on the map. It's on the map <laughs> layer. The uh, the harp that was being played, the band that was there. Uh, I think you might remember that Dale was actually hidden among the band uh, and causing chaos. Um, but the one thing you, you kind of look to the floor and you realize the bird is facing the other direction as this whole place is mirrored. I'm going to like dance between these, these guys and get so I'm not adjacent to any of them after what happened earlier. You do feel as you pass by them, there's a sort of lean that they have. Um, but you also kind of feel within you this weird sort of notion Perhaps it's Meredith kind of shrinking even farther in, uh, having seen the same sort of thing happen. And so while you feel their their ghostly fingers kind of caress as if trying to reach through your flesh, you're quick enough uh, that they, they aren't able to gain any purchase. Uh, the Baroness is intently watching you as you come in. Again, that sort of amused look on her face. I'll just wave at her. What is this place? Interesting that you should ask. I don't get a lot of visitors here. Not 
Not like you. Most people don't come in of their own will. You'll also notice that uh, Rodolfo slash Philandrius did not come into the place with you. He's literally standing by the front door and he's not going anywhere. Uh, you're not sure if that's because he wants to just get the hell out of here as fast as possible. Maybe he already has. You can't I mean, originally he said he wasn't coming in anyway, so I wasn't surprised. Yeah, just wanted Please to point that out. I did not move him at all from where he was, and that was semi-intentional. Um, anyway, um, the Baroness looks at you, and there's a, another one of these these uh, um, shades sitting in a chair beside her as well. Um, I've not expected anyone quite like you to just walk in. Which is interesting. Hasn't happened in quite a while. Makes me wonder if you're after something. We are. At least you're honest. Well, I whenever, whenever I try to lie, I, I do a hilariously bad job, so... Huh. It's not wrong. Wisdom I mean, saving throw from Medric, please. We have proficiency bonus on this item. If you have any, any kind yeah, of, uh, you would, yeah. If you have any kind of magical 22. resistance, okay, we don't need it. Um, as you feel in your mind, um, sort of gentle probing that goes away very quickly, very deftly, and very quickly vanishes. Um, Annie, since you're oh, not well. attuned to the ring, I am not. Make a wisdom saving throw with advantage. This is gonna be. Ooh. Fourteen. Okay. Um, and you kind of are aware in that moment. One of those things that you're kind of aware of, it's like when you stub your toe and you kind of look at your toe and you're kind of embarrassed at your toe. And then a second later, the pain kicks in. It's kind of that delayed reaction of, huh, someone How just... How dare you betray me, toe? Someone just looked into my head and is starting to pick around. Um, and you see an amused expression pass across the Baroness's faces. Interesting faces. Her face. She only has one. Uh, as uh, she kind of looks uh, surprised and amused. Very interesting. You're special in so many ways. Your Majesty. Yeah, we seek one named Melora. And I'll briefly, just, I'll briefly describe her and say that she came here accidentally and we'd like to help her find her way home. Uh, so what is Silas doing during all this? You're staying at the, staying back or? Silas stopped back out of sight of the uh, doorway after Medrick mentioned the Baroness was there. Okay. Uh, as the Baroness, if that's actually the Baroness, may have, may not have fond memories of Silas. <laughs> um <laughs> He's going to... Uh, Tornado of chaos that he is. Yeah, he kind of tortured her last time, so... Um, <laughs> kind of joined with the bad guys for a while there, too, if I recall correctly. <laughs> eh, he just... Good, bad. Silas is a, the ones Silas is a complicated path through life. <laughs> um, uh, he's going to change his look again, uh, so that the robe now kind of looks like a robe of tentacles, like octopus-type <laughs> okay. tentacles. Um, and, uh, the hood will melt away and there will be like a, like an octopus mask, like, kind of like Davy Jones from the, uh, the Johnny Depp pirate movies. There was actually somebody at the party who had a mask like that. Uh, her squid head mask, if you recall. Mm. Um, yeah, this dwarves. is an octopus head. Okay. Well, let's make that um, surely distinct. Um, <laughs> yep, uh, and it it'll look like the mask. Like the mask itself looks, it like, will look solid, like it's uh, a greenish blue gemstone or something. Uh, and then he'll come in. Okay. And um, he'll look over at the Baroness and see what her reaction is. Okay. I think Medrick's mid-description of, you know, she's about this tall, she has this color hair, and 
whatever. How many? How many? How deep do the details get for Medric? Like, is he? Is like, he? Has he studied what she looks like? Is he really kind of getting into detail, or is it like, I don't know. She's like something like this. I don't know. Just height, general size, and yeah, just surface details. Okay. Um. Silas, uh, wisdom saving throw. As soon as you step in the room, if you have any sort of resistance against magic or mental effects, that he does. I was pretty sure somebody That's... did. Seventeen. Okay. Um, as you feel the gentle probe, uh, uh, very, very subtle. And, and in fact, if you weren't kind of prepared for the moment, you might have even missed it and just dismissed it automatically. Uh, but because you're kind of cautious and uh, expecting something, um, you're aware of that. Mm-hmm. He'll say, that's rude. Say the people who walked into my home. I mm. take it you're the dream taker? You have a point. I have a lot of titles and names. It's interesting you're not the, sometimes. You're not the Baroness, though. I am here. And she kind of holds your hand out expansively. Do you like what I've done with the place? It needed a change. Yeah, here it's a bit mirrored, but... It... Still looks decent, I guess. It's missing a few things, but I think you're operating on... I think you did well with the limited information you have. Thank you. I hope to complete the picture at some point. A friend. What was her name again? Melora. Hmm. Melora Cartwright. Interesting. What do you think? And she turns to the figure beside her. And it shifts into fairly accurately described Melora. I, and she kind of looks forward at all of you with a, actually all of you make an insight check. In that moment. And I will give it to you for advantage because you've you've dealt with Melora a number of times. She's a friend of yours. You came all this way. You must know her at least a little bit. Yep. Looks like Melora to me. With advantage, 25. All right. So, yes, to Silas, hmm, it's a pretty convincing illusion anyway. Yeah. He doesn't know much about her. He's like, sure, looks like the person we're after. To um, Annie and Medrick, um... It seems like her, first of all. You also see this war of emotions on her face that she's trying very careful not to portray um, as she looks at you with hard eyes. And you also all notice that she does look different from last time you'd seen her. Um, There are a number of small scars. Her clothing has been uh, entirely replaced from the casual clothing she was wearing at the time to something much more functional. You also notice... Uh, a uh, a brooch that hangs around her neck, which has a a strange yellow opal in the center of it, and it kind of looks familiar for some reason. Um, as she turns to the rest of you, I have no friends. Not here. Anyway, and the sense you get is. She does not want to admit that you're close to her in front of the Baroness. Gotcha. Well, I mean, it's clearly a sense of mistaken identity, I guess. Well, her father did ask us to bring her back home. Did he? We never said we were her friends. Uh Uh-huh. I'm sure her father thinks of her often. I'll have to look into that. You've come all this way. Seems like such a shame. Uh, Silas is going to cross the room and look down the other hallway. Uh, okay. Just to, with his magic sight, just to see if anything gets picked up. Because we're here to grab a certain item that we needed in order to get her out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, even with your magic sight, it only penetrates less than 40 feet away. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's still fairly short. Um, nothing, 
at the moment seems to stand out beyond the background. So, I'm always curious about guests. Who might you be? And he, she looks at Medric. You seem... interesting. Yeah, I, I get that a lot. I'm Medric, Phoenix Champion. Oh. Kamara of Ignis. How fascinating. A follower of Ignis, all the way here. You must feel a little cold. Never. Hmm. You will. Silas walks out and down the hallway. Okay. You guys watch as Silas kind of wanders away. Um, the door here is open, and you can see in that there's a couple of people standing there. Um, if you want to pop in there, or if there's somewhere else in particular you're going, or what what is your no. plan here? He's going to head down towards where the Baroness's room was. Okay. The one with the plant tentacle carpet when in the real yeah, world. <laughs> okay. Planticle. Um, Would it be possible to take like a five minute break? I just got to uh, Sure, we can take a, a quick break if that's okay. Great. Right. AFK. Um, I just don't want to wait until like we roll initiative and that's like, oh, BRB washer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does everybody need a, a quick break? If so, uh, I can put on our. Yeah, I need to blow my nose. Okay. Well, I do have oh, a fine. pause screen, but uh, it doesn't do all that much. <laughs> so. Uh, I can stop the stream and we can we can pick it up afterwards. I can put the two videos together. That works for me. All right, so we'll be back. Uh, let's say at it's four forty eight now. We'll be back at uh, four fifty five. Just round it off. Gives us all time to get away. All right, back soon. There we are. And I realized that none of you at home could see the map <laughs> because I hadn't changed the screen. So, yes, there is indeed a map that I've been referring to. And uh, some of you who have been watching for a while recognize this. Yes, it is the interior of the uh, Baron, uh, the Barony uh, that was used for the way too long party. Not having that happen again, uh, but reversed uh, left to right as well. So back where we were. Um Silas is on the march while the rest uh, pay attention to, I guess, the uh, Baroness and uh, talk a little bit. Um, Annie, you notice as Silas goes out that door on the left, um, there is a slight nod from the Baroness and the dwarf you saw by the other side uh, exits mm -hmm. and then seems to move away. Which is something different from all the other people you've met in here. Um, just recap. So basically she's tell, telling Melora, Melora seems to be not wanting to know her to know that we're acquainted with her, basically. Seems like that. At the end of the day, we've been asked to retrieve someone who was taken here against their will. We're here to, to get, bring them home. I see. And you think this right. is that person. Are you held against your will? And Melora looks at the Baroness and looks at the rest of you. No, I belong here. And it doesn't take an insight check to recognize the sort of flat delivery of, I guess I got to say this. You're muted, uh, Nax. Great. Here we go. The rock you came here with, is, is that still around? or? Uh, and the Baroness raises an eyebrow. Rock? And Melora... Rock. ...kind of <laughs> shakes her head kind of a little bit insistently. Um, no, that was destroyed damn okay and then she sort of self-consciously 
tugs on the amulet around her, around her neck. And in this instant, it's one of those image over image overlays that sometimes happens or you're kind of looking at the world and you realize this is like that. And you remember that Graveler's eye, the primary eye on this forward facing uh, side, mm -hmm. was amber and about that size. Right. I'm just wondering if we want to start a fight right now. <laughs> um, is Silas continuing to move along? Uh, is there a chance we could, uh, you know, just talk outside? Just me and, and I'll point to my lord. <laughs> I don't think so. There, Marsh, she'll be right back. There is no outside anymore. Hey, wait, where's, uh, ah, name, what's his face? Where's Valandrius? Yeah, I mean, you don't see him here, and I don't know if mm -hmm. Annie considers anything. You do remember that Valandrius, in the other form of Rodolfo, literally handed you over to the enemy, or at least thought he was doing so. But you don't know what happened in this case. Also, he flat out told, told us that he wasn't going to come in here, so him disappearing once we came in here, not surprised. Yeah. Unfazed. But, I mean, if there's no outside, then what happened to him? Well, he did come through the door with us. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't leave after that. Well, hopefully he's still there, because if outside is no longer existing. Inside and outside are... Unnecessary concepts here. You're now my guests, and I insist that you stay. But don't worry. Your time here will be pleasant. Well, we can stay for a little while, I suppose, but, uh, so what do you do here? Like, what is this place? This is a refuge. She kind of opens her hands magnanimously. This is a place where you can let go of all those things that bothered you once. You must have memories that bother you. Well, yeah, everybody does. Precisely. And it is my pleasure and duty to relieve so many of their burdens. Well, people usually learn to deal with their burdens. Otherwise, what's the point of even being alive? And she kind of stands up and starts to stroll, uh, hands kind of around her back. But as she moves by these two figures here, she kind of reaches out as if caressing one by the shoulder. And there's a sort of look of, of physical ecstasy almost, a uh, sort of straightening of the uh, curving of the back and a raising of the shoulders and the head goes back and the hands go wide as um, the Baroness kind of caresses along where the shoulder would be. And the figure is in this joyous moment also seemingly diminished. Less of the figure seems to be there. That same problem you had before of when you looked at something, you could see out of the corner of your eye that the attention had been paid to that moment, that place you're looking, and parts of the rest of it had been obfuscated out of reality, seems to occur even more strongly. Um, and she continues to kind of move around, and after she lets go, the figure drops back down to a normal sort of humanoid shape and continues to seem to converse in a whispered, almost uh, well, completely unheard voice. Silas, as you move down the hallway, um, leaning up against the doorframe um, on the inside of that central passageway, you see that same dwarven figure you had seen in the main room, um, leaning up against the, the doorway, kind of watching uh, and looking at you. Are you lost? Is there something you need? I'm just seeing how much this uh, building matches the real thing. So you're not one of the dreamers. What makes you say that? 
Everything you're far more dreams. attentive. Sorry? Everything dreams. Yes, but you seem to... Uh, you have a lot more attention than uh, these phantasms do. Do you as, work for her directly? As much as my employer, let's use that word, as much as my employer likes to make sure that everyone is accommodated, some people find it necessary to disrupt things. I'm just here to make sure that everyone gets along. So you're her enforcer. If you wish to use such terms, mm -hmm. I have other terms. What would you call yourself? A steward. Sorry, I did not get that. A steward. Oh, sure, okay. I make sure that things get to where they're supposed to be. Interesting. But you're not like most of the people here either. No, no, I think we came willingly. Uh, Silas is going to look at his staff and use it to recharge one of his spell slots. Okay. The, uh, the sort of casual... Um, position that this person had, this dwarf had against the doorframe, shifts to a, a, a more standing, slightly more attentive stance, almost as if reacting to potentially a threat. Now, maybe there's something I can get for you. Is there a, a fond memory or a place that you would like to visit once more? Something you remember? Or maybe an ambition you have. Something you're looking forward to. Hmm. No, I think I'd like the real thing. And Silas will walk over to the the door that we had unlocked before. It it required the picking the lock in, in real life. But... <laughs> the one yeah. that was in the pain of the ass. Yep. Um, it's a simple door in this particular extension. Um, the inside, uh, although I've used the same map, the inside is actually completely plain. There's nothing on the floors, nothing on the walls, nothing. There are four people standing inside, or the four phantasms, if you want to use that word. I don't mm. think you'll find what you're looking for in there, depending on what it is you're looking for. I take it nothing pops up uh, magical or anything. Nothing beyond the background, no. Okay. No. No, the room was much more interesting the last time. Really? Silas will walk in. Does he recognize any of the people? Um, as you move a bit more closely, you do realize that at least one of them has that substantial uh, presence. Um, but uh, actually, it is someone you would recognize in particular. Um, this, I think so. This uh, is Beatrix. Beatrix is actually one of Wish's apprentices. Um, so you would know them quite, uh, quite well from that. Um, but she wasn't at the party again. She was not at the party, so far as you know. You didn't see everybody that was at the party, but yeah. um, there was no reason. And Wish came alone to the party. Um, Beatrix is a very well-built female half-elf, you think? Um, probably distant half-elf, if actually a half-elf. Um, only be able to tell by a slight cornering of the ears. Um, seems to be talking uh, about... Um, a project she's working on. She's using very f large physical motion to describe the, the impact with her hand on or her fist on one hand, but the impact of the hammers and how she's um, finally able to get some of the curves that she's been trying to get for a while and trying to get better at the strength. So shop talk with the other, the other people that are there or, or possibly trying to sell something. It's hard to tell. Um, she's definitely more enthusiastic about the shop talk part. 
Yeah, uh, Silas will walk up to her and say, Beatrix, what are you doing here? And there's a kind of look of confusion that passes across her face. Uh, Mr. Marsh, I, uh, I'm funny running into you here. I didn't think you went for this kind of place. And she looks what a little bit embarrassed. This? Um, <laughs> well, it's a bit rougher than your usual drinking establishment, I think. Um, mostly where the sailors hang out, but good sales can be made here. Sailors need armor too. No, oh, believe me, I've been all I've been to all the sailor spots. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to suggest. I mean, I know you do a lot on the sea and everything, but I just thought that, you know, well. Mr. Um, shoot, which which is the last name? I've just forgotten it. Ah, I don't remember either. Uh, Wyndham. That, that's uh. Mr. Mr. Wyndham um, talks pretty highly about you, and I I thought you were associating with a a better crowd of people. Not not that these people aren't. And you see her kind of trying to fumble, and and she wants to do the sale and wants these people to be Im impressed by her, but at the same time she's like these people are basically scum they're 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 the the rats of the sea and maybe they'll buy my stuff so it's fine to self a little bit caught about uh about that okay he speaks positively of me yes uh oh uh don't don't tell him i told you that uh he um He respects you more than perhaps you realize. Uh, I think he just misses his daughter. So, you know, it's awkward for him. Mm. No. Uh, no, I understand. He'd skin me if he knew you heard it from me. Uh, Silas will lean in and say, uh, I do kind of know this spot. I don't think you're going to get as much of a sale from these guys if you want. Um, he'll put an arm around her shoulder and try to guide her out and say, perhaps you should go sleep it off. And he's <laughs> not casting a spell. He's just trying to persuade her to go home and sleep it off. Um, the dwarf has moved to the door there and is kind of watching what you're doing uh you can go ahead and make a persuasion roll but this is a a, a contested roll um uh, i got a 12. i mean she's not she's a bit hard-headed let's do that oh shit natural 20. Oof. <laughs> she's not just that hard -headed. Hard -headed. just a bit hard-headed yeah. but uh this is like no I, I i appreciate it i can take care of myself i've been in worse places than this Besides, these folks are just on the edge. I'm going to sell them some decent armor. I, th I think the stories they've been telling me what they're finding out in the sea, I think that they need something, and, and it's a good time for people to be sold stuff. So I can make a really good score here, and that would show to the master that I'm even more than just, uh, you know, banging on metal. I really need this. Well, you keep an eye out, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks. And Sil Silas will head out, uh, try and, to remember that she's there. And again, beyond sort of five feet, she doesn't really seem to notice you and turns back her attention to them. Um, the dwarf at the door, however, um, looks, looks at you with a bit more suspicion, open suspicion than before. I think you need to come back and talk to the, my employer. Sure, I think we can do that. So what's the difference between uh, ones like her and the the ones that aren't quite all there anymore? Hmm, well, let's put it this way. Not everybody has big hopes, dreams, and ambitions. Some people just have quieter nights
There is something slightly sinister about the way that he says that. Mm. Meanwhile, the Baroness continues to, to, to walk around and continues to kind of reach out. And when she gets to this point, reaches out to both of them on either side and both react with that sort of, um, that shake of, of joy. Uh, and the one on her left-hand side actually vanishes. What did you just do to that? Not much. Just welcome them, welcome them beyond where they were. So are all these uh, shadowy shapes, are they just people who are sleeping and dreaming in the, more, in the material plane? And she bends down and you can now see that where that shadow had been, there's a small, about an inch sized coin. It's entirely black. She picks it up, admires it. You see, dreams are complicated things, but they are remnants of what was. And some are remnants of what will never be. And with those lingering fetters, some people never move on. It's my job here, my role, my duty, my pleasure to help so many. What happened to that one that just turned into a coin? Did you just kill him? What is death, really? Some would say it's the ceasing to be. Others would say it's only one more step in a journey. This one, and holds up the coin, will go on a new journey now. And they kind of push the coin into a, uh, a pocket, or into their cloak. Kind of push the cloak back a little bit and drops the coin into what looks like a jewel-encrusted bottle. And the coin goes in, and the bottle, almost as if it's follow, following a slower-than-normal follow, uh, follow, falling of the coin in the bottle, seems to glow a trace down the side of it. Well, that was a lot of words to say yes. Not everybody agrees on what death is. If you're here in the shadow and you're not the traditional pathway through, there's only two ways you could have come. Through his great majesty's search, and there's a very bitter tone about his great majesty. Who's, who's his majesty you speak of? Why, of course, Paturo. Master of this realm. Oh, the two eyes in the sky guy. What's he searching for? It's hard to say. Whatever it is, he hasn't found it yet. And it's causing all kinds of mayhem. Which, of course, the rest of us are having to deal with. But as for the other way, the way that most interlopers come here, well, that's by force, and that's not to be treated lightly. I certainly won't. No, don't worry. We have no plans of do on, on doing this again. If you did, I will have them. What, plans? What is a plan? What is an ambition? What is a hope? What is a wish? But a dream about the future. And those are all the same to me. You were walking towards the door. Were you not going somewhere? Or? No, she's just walking around the room. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to like, encourage her to leave the room in a very awkward manner. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, in fact, she is kind of continuing to circle 
and move around. Now that one's no longer there, she can move freely through that space. And again, kind of walking around and observing you. And you feel, to a certain degree, um, like... Um, oh, that one should be gone, actually, because that's, that's the one that's going wandering. Uh, oh, no, sorry, it is there. My mistake. Um, observing you from all angles. Uh, and um, uh, Medric, once more... Um, you feel your memories rifled through. Uh, and... Do I get a wisdom, a wisdom save or no? Well, you failed the other one, right? No, I, I got it. I got it. Oh, really you get high. the success. That's yeah. right. It was it was uh, Annie that failed. So it would be Annie's memories it, that have been gone through. Um, and you involuntarily think of um, Varendel. You involuntarily think of your parents... And then there's a pause in the rifling as she hits upon Meredith. Ooh. Not the memory, but the one that's here now. Oh my. That simply will not do. You're carrying something you should have let go of a long time ago. Fortunately, that's my job. And she reaches out and touches the one that's beside her. No. And it vanishes. And I think I did already delete it from that map layer because it was supposed to be there. Spoiler and I looked at that. And there it is, but it actually vanishes now. So, <laughs> um, And I think about that point is when um, Silas will make it back up towards that door. Um. Are you heading straight back up, or were you going somewhere else? Sorry. What? Oh, to that door. Okay. So Silas, you I, I'm see. I'm going to be keeping a, a distance from from her. Okay. Silas, as you come through the door, you see um, just in time for the Baroness to have reached out, touched one of these uh, figures by the door and for it to have vanished in a moment of ecstasy, which similarly passes across the Baroness's face. It's not ecstasy in the same sort of way. It's more like a look of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Melora, if that's really your name, despite all your other claims. No, that's not your name anymore, is it? Geoda, please, take them into a comfortable place. And you see Melora nod her head. Yes. And there's a moment of hesitation as she looks at the three of you and grimaces, I'm sorry. I can't say no. And she steps forward. As she does, she touches the amulet around her, her neck. And her physical form shifts. As from this, this uh, amulet, you see tendrils of rock flow out over her body and encapsulate her entirely. And you stand there with uh, something else. Let's see, where are you here? There you are. As a entirely different figure uh, stands in front of you, and we will name this one Geoda. Does anything happen when I say "motherfucker"? Uh, I don't know. Is that the key for one of your spells? No, it's uh, <laughs> the key to activate uh, Graveler. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you should probably choose a phrase that you're not going to utter at other times, but uh, um, actually, as you do so, and the, the central eye that was the, um, the the center part of this of this uh, amulet does kind of glow amber for a second, almost in response. Uh, but then, standing before you is not just uh, Melora covered in stone, but you can actually see a third arm protruding from her back. Uh, and a, uh, a third leg, if you will, that protrudes like a tail, uh, steadying her. And we're going to roll initiative. 
to see where this goes for the moment. Um, as soon as I remember where the initiative tracker is going to. And do I remember how to roll initiative? <laughs> uh, one second. Is that I have clicked my is. dude this time. All right. So if you go ahead, you should be able to click your dudes. And press the thing. And I'll see if I, I can... I to not roll advantage, but it was the same. <laughs> uh, okay. I've rolled poorly, as usual. <laughs> you know, Jota rolled a four, so you might be okay in terms of <laughs> that. Um, that one was a natural 20, however, which is always interesting. Wait, but I still have the grappler. I still have the grappler, like rock in my backpack yep um where are we here so i'll put that on the floor and say again i said motherfucker well on your turn perhaps you yeah. can try <laughs> um that may maybe that was the entire mistake you made right then it's just uh nope not that guy where did he go Forgot to put everything in the same place. There we go. Uh, this guy. So for him. Nope, that's Silas. And we'll not do anything for Silas. That guy. And where's my other dude? Find all the dudes. All the dudes. Uh, oh, there he is. Uh, he was in the other room the whole time. Okay, let's see if we've got everybody here. Uh, do I need this? There we go. So, um, as action starts to seem to happen, the first one to move seems to be the Baroness. Um, who seems to be just observing for the moment. Um, next up is Annie. You see the form of Geoda has transformed, or the transformed form of Melora into Geoda seems to be coming in a menacing way in your direction. I will back up to is. Is this thing a post? Like a, it's a pillar. A pillar? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to back up to there then. Okay. Anything else? Um, I will pull a dart out. Um, one of my darts from my... Actually, do I have darts? Give me two seconds. Don't use my equipment in a while. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 thorn, thorn, thorn. What do those do again? No, I would have have, have it as arrows. Um, I'm going to basically grab my bow and ready uh, if she comes towards me to, like, if, if she comes, like, oh my goodness, that, that general area like to to shoot her before she gets to me okay with one of those, shoot at melora the horns yeah okay with one Aim of my for the amulet. Uh, let's see here i just realized i have to it's been a while there we go um because i hadn't had that proper and then this one Mean. Okay. So backing up, holding a, holding a dart at the ready just in case something bad happens. Generally, bad things happen. Yep. It wouldn't be D and D if it if it didn't. <laughs> uh, behind you, Silas. Uh, you you realize the dwarf is going to grab you. I don't have a particular grab action in the sheet, so it just looked like a claw, but it's actually a grab. Um, sure. And it was a oof, 23 to the claw, or to grab, to grab a hold of you. 
And that's hey, a that's an opposed. That is opposed by athletics or acrobatics. Or if you have something else. That's not enough. So he now has a hold of you and is going to uh, I think where is the spot that I want to put you? I think proceeding to drag you backward out of the area. So um, so first he brings him back to the area. Now he's dragging him out of the area. Well, um, he was just ordered something different. So it's kind of like, okay, well, I guess I'll do that then. Uh, as he starts to drag you, do, 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 half his movement back into this common area. So um, the fog is still thick which means you can just barely see Medric as a, as a measurement for how far um, the fog obscures things. That's their mode, or their move. Uh, the next one is really just a mistake, because it was supposed to be one and not the other, as uh, this one reveals themselves to be uh, this person. They, oops. So another one comes jogging in, looking like a young woman, and will attempt to grab onto Medric. Oh, and I've gotten rid of my. There we go. So that's a tw twenty-two. Those are really good rolls. Hey. I just opposed uh, acrobatics or athletics. Well, it's going to be athletics because I actually have more pluses than that. How many pluses? I forget. It's on my old sheet. All the pluses. Plus six. Oh, I wish you're, me roll you're even then. Hey, Natural 20. 26. There you go. You easily wriggle out. Um, as you wriggle out, um, you find your f hand pricked slightly as if by something sharp you could not see which feels really strange. But otherwise, you're unaffected. Okay, I'm glad it's not a con save. <laughs> uh, let's go for... Oops, these were out of order. There we go. It is your turn now. Okay. Um, and this person in front of me is, like, corporeal? Seems to be. Do I recognize her? Uh, no. Do I want to harm an innocent or go after the Baroness? But I know she's going to go after me after. So, uh, shield up and take a swing. Okay, then. My modifier is so it's, it's, it's a proficiency bonus plus strength, right? Uh, proficiency bonus plus strength for you, yes, for normal strikes. Your weapon might have bonuses as well, I don't know. Yes, plus one. Okay. Swing, 15. Uh, 15 uh, meets beats, so you just barely struck them. Warhammer to the face. All right. And then it's only uh, it's only plus strength for damage, right? Uh, it's Again, if your weapon has a bonus for damage, I don't know. Plus four, yes. It's been so long since since, since we've done combat. <laughs> um, the total bonus should be um, already pre-calculated, so it would include your strength, most likely. Because I doubt you have a plus four weapon. I mean, it's a plus strength, plus one yeah. from the okay. sword. Okay. Right, sword, not Warhammer. So she takes 11 damage. All right. Or her dream world self takes 11 damage. Well, as you strike uh, at this person... Uh, is that a magical weapon, first of all? Uh, I think it, oh, right, it, does, it does lightning, uh, it does 1d4 lightning damage. Okay, well, that also is effective, but it's, the, the question was really if it's magical, because that makes a difference in this case. Uh, I don't know. Okay. If it, if it does lightning damage, it's a magic weapon. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. So make sure I get the right one. So she takes 11 plus 2. As her form shifts in front of you to that of something... Much more sinister. Um, well, then I'm standing, glad I hit it. standing about, um, well, it's long and wiry and probably would stand taller than you if it wasn't kind of uh, uh, 
bent over a little bit. Uh, appears to be a humanoid figure, um, thin gray skin, very tough looking gray skin, covered in long, thin barbs on all of its limbs and on its back and on its head. It has a wicked, devilish look on its face with a long uh, snout more than a, more than a nose, very sharp looking teeth. Uh, I think you've faced off against barbed devils before, but essentially that is what this is. I don't think we have. Um, well, now you have. It yells a quick pull back. Okay. Um, was... What did Silas just say? Pull back? Seems yeah. like that's what he said. Now with that Melora. So it is Silas' turn. Choice. He is bound, but otherwise, um, so no motion, but um, still have an action. It is your turn. Uh, okay. Well, I can't do that because that would hit Medric. Uh, he does have you by the arms if you need to use your arms for something. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, he uses uh, Dimension Door out of the ring to uh, reappear here. That works. So you kind uh, of step... fall back, comes uh, back. No, actually, room. it does not work. Dimension Door is a move action. You don't have a move action right now. Okay. Dimension Door is a bonus action that teleports me up to 90 feet. Oh, okay. Sorry, what am I... Th oh, I'm thinking of... Um... Misty Step is a, is a move action. Uh, nope, Misty Step is also a bonus action it is teleport. A, it, is a motion, it is a move action, I'm pretty sure. But it doesn't matter right now because you don't have yeah. that one. But um, I've, yeah, it's weird. Um, uh, yeah, I'll say let's... that free, frees you from the grasp um, of the creature. Well, maybe that's not the one. Okay, well, I'm going to see, Let's see, that's 5, 10, 15, 20. I don't suppose it's possible for me to center the spell past that, uh, past the window up here by a couple of feet. Uh, there is no past the window up there. It's opaque. Yeah. Well... I think this will still be the most effective thing I can do. Hopefully. Um, I could do that, actually. One, two, two, three. Just trying to find a way I can do something without hitting Medric. Nice well, stuff. He's got good AC. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, not right now. He's he's uh, currently held. No, I, I, oh no, no that's right. That's right. Keep yeah. getting this mixed up. Pardon me. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, I will cast uh, fairy fire. Uh, what's that? Okay, what's oh, 20 foot cube? That's better. Eh, no, I'm still going to hit Medric. <laughs> Wait, no. Sorry, 10 foot cube either side. Yeah, he'll uh, cast uh, fairy fire from this spot in the hallway he can see through the door. Okay. So... And anything within 10 feet of that gets a dex save or else they're outlined in uh, aqua color. Okay, so we've Blue got uh, this was the point I think you said. Yep. So the barb devil there, Medric, and the Baroness, and I think yourself. Uh, no, oh, sorry, it's more? not twenty. It's ten feet from this spot. Oh, ten so feet. It okay. won't hit Medric. Okay. But it will get the Baroness, the barb devil, and the two fa uh, spirity phantom things. What is the uh, save again? Dex. Uh, dexterity save. Okay. I don't think Medric would mind glowing even more. 
I'm just uh, <laughs> they get advantage to hit you though. That's a fail oh, on that fuck. one. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's see the magical it's a nature. 15 difficulty 15 uh this is a spell so 16 on the on the uh that would save, yeah. okay we'll just mark him as having uh let's see that's close to teal a blue dot is the fairy fire Uh, oh, actually, do they have any resistances? Uh, they do actually have a resistance, so I'm going to roll it one more time. Um, 19. So actually, they do succeed. Okay. So the the burst of light goes off. Both of them are alarmingly quick. Uh, uh, there would be the two phantoms, too. The two. They don't move. <laughs> they are affected, but they don't seem to move. Okay. Uh, no, nope, I'm just saying... Yep. Uh, yeah. If we end up attacking them, we'll need to know. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about this one. Uh, poor guy. All right. He's affected. That might matter. Okay. I think that's, uh, that's my bonus move in action. Yeah, he'll finish his move over here just in case. Actually, back here. That's it for my turn. Okay, how wide is that? Uh, yeah, that'll actually work. Uh, as uh, Geoda, um, still under instruction, presumably by the Baroness, um, lurches forward one step, actually steps back right to the very edge of the window, um, dives forward, wraps her arms around her, all three arms kind of wrapping around. The legs curl in and she forms a large ball and rolls uh, her entire Ten ball time. is 30. Um, so, oh, actually. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> it is a... And all of a sudden, we're in an Indiana uh, Jones trap situation. It is a beam. Uh, they actually have the beam measurements now. So, uh, oops, I got Is there adjustments for the beam? Ah, there we go. Is a 15 foot wide beam, uh, which, yeah. Uh, oh. Did you say it was 40 or 30 feet? It is 30 feet. So actually, Annie will be outside of the range. Now she'll take, uh, no, it would be her movement. So uh, Annie will be, you know, she'll end up standing right in front of Annie. But as she rolls forward in a charge. Uh, you must make a, so, uh, Medric and Silas both have to make a dexterity saving throw. And once she hits, oh, oh dexterity. <laughs> once she hits here, I also will shoot her with my bow. Right. Well, I get trampled. <laughs> okay. It looks like Silas, uh, saves for half. Not so much for, nah, for, uh, um... Melora, wait. Yeah, and, and she did apologize <laughs> earlier. So against um, Medric first takes... Uh, that can't be right, can it? I hope not. It sounds bad. Uh, no, that did... Oh, that's... Oh, I saw Marie's uh, damage there. Oh. I thought, how did I roll a 17? I don't think I can roll that high. No. Uh, it is <laughs> 11 bludgeoning damage, though, for uh, Medric. Uh, and you are knocked prone. Actually, you're knocked 10 feet to the side and then prone. Um, and feet to which side? You might want so, to move my character. <laughs> yeah, basically right into the wall there. Um, Silas takes half damage. So six damage. And is not knocked, uh, uh, not thrown. Uh, and that ends up putting her right in front of you. Uh, and of course your shot is a 17. Uh, a 17 seven, with a thorn. 17 bounces off the surface of her rocky hide. God damn. Mm. I'll be right back. I'm just going to shut the blind and open it. Okay. Um, and that is Geoda's turn. Is Melora still st still up top or is Melora Geoda? Um, oh, so the Melora should not be there. Melora is okay. now Geoda. I'm back. Um, that is her turn. Uh, I keep forgetting that the Baroness has lots of actions. Uh-oh. 
Uh, let's see. What does it? What does she want to do? Uh. Sure. Uh, since she, since you're right there, you kind of get knocked into the ground just beside her. The Baroness will look down at Medric. You really should give up on all of this. It would be no. so much easier in the end. And she casts a spell. Please make a wisdom saving throw. If you have anything that resists or helps you resist charm. This would be I have uh, my proficiency bonus. Okay. Uh, Fuck. DC <laughs> is more than 10. Uh, DC is, where is he here? Uh, what is her DC? Oh, you'd think they'd put that as an, e an easy spot, but they do not. Her DC is, I don't know, seven. Uh, no, it's, it's, Just... it's more than seven. It's more than 10. Uh, <laughs> you are charmed. Over your head appears a jagged iron crown and your eyes glow with a, a madness. You've been subjected to crown of madness. Um... The charmed target must take its action before moving on each of its turns to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that the person uh, controlling you chooses. Uh, and so you're suffering from Crown of Madness. I'm going to bring up the full spell here. Um, I can probably find it. The target can act normally a turn with choose no creature. No, she's not going to do that. Um, they got it here. You can make a wisdom saving throw at the end of each of your turns to end the spell. All right. So a crown of madness has flown about your head. It's going to put it as a. Well, hopefully Silas recognizes that. <laughs> a uh, giant thing. Uh, which one of these? They really should have a text search for the different status effects because trying to interpret the little diagrams right now is not helping me. So I'm going to put it as the screaming face of red. Um, then she is going to step. Uh, let's see. Um, step over here. So she steps back and just appears sitting on her throne. Um, I will say, and I've got to do an adjustment here because there's another character that has to replace her as she will reveal her true nature. Um, ah, come on. All right. Adding a turn. That one with 22. Yes. Um, as in front of you, the, the Baroness. Oh, too many buttons. The Baroness. <laughs> um, vanishes. And in her place is a cloaked figure with a clear a plain white mask and two dark holes where eyes should be. Most of the figure is indistinct, um, but you feel like this is perhaps the true uh, visage of the dream taker. Um, where you are right now, you're okay. Uh, that uh, is that and that, and I will take. Silas admonishes her for taking his, uh, his uh, branding. Pretty sure she had it first, but uh, See, okay. One of one of one of us has to go home and change, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'll do it here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we step out. <laughs> um, moving forward now, um, transforming as well from the dwarven shape is now the other of these forms. Um, another one of these barb devils that once more tries to grab. Uh, someone, this time Annie in this case. So this is a grab. Oop, but a natural one makes it a seven, which is not a grab success. 
So maybe Grab it's the, the presence of the un unveiled master. Maybe it's something else, but they are stymied for the moment. Um, now, whose turn is it? It is Annie's turn. A plethora of targets awaits you. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, currently, so Melora touched the amulet that looks like Graveler's eye mm -hmm. to transform. Is, is the amulet still there? The eye is, but the rest of the amulet seems to be buried within. Okay. That idea is shot. Okay, and I am there, going to. And there is no surface this... not covered in rock, by the way. It's not like it's just a, a a piece here and a piece there. It's got complete solid rock encasing. Basically, my brain was like, "Okay, can I? Is there a way for me to like slice away the?" <laughs> doot, doot. the chain? Just turn it off. Doot, doot. Doot, doot. <laughs> um, I'm going to stab this dude with vice. Okay. He hopes not to be stabbed, um, uh, and attempts not to be I... stabbed. Um, stabby stabs. And with bated breath. Ooh, not great. He succeeds in parrying your knife with many of the sharp spines coming out of his body. Wonderful. And there's a, a wicked um, grin that extends ear to ear in an unnatural fashion. Uh, I'm also going to, uh, because I didn't realize how low on hit points I was, um, use my second one. Okay. Good idea. <laughs> well, I have a free... Uh, okay, like, that brings me up to 62. Okay, good job. Um, that is Annie's turn. The other one... I hadn't realized that I had lost so many hit points running into walls. <laughs> I think it was the uh, it was the spiders, actually. You guys never healed up after the spiders. Mo most of it, though, like, I only lost, like, five hit points from from that. The rest of it was running into walls. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, don't run into walls. Note to self, also make her run into walls more often. Um, <laughs> the other one is going to cross the room and grab at Silas. They seem to be intent. Actually, you know what? It's just going to attack. I was going to say, it's intent to, 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 no, actually, there's no allies around. <laughs> uh, as it uh, does a wicked grin pulls in its breath, and then throws out um, flame at you. Um, let's see. It's going to do twice. Um, did that actually roll? That didn't actually roll. Oh, there it did. Okay. Uh, so it was a seven to hit. That is really bad. How is, how is that even possible? Yeah, it is possible. Okay. Uh, and for the second strike, a 11 to hit. Oh, wait, so the second strike is a 15. I guess I did do it three times. Should be only twice. Who was that at? That was at Silas. Sorry, I didn't mean to obscure that. Uh, does a 15 hit? Uh, well. Not when I use my reaction to get plus two from the shield. <laughs> okay. As a gout of flame, this would have been 16 fire uh, blazes over you. Uh, and that is... Uh, um, I think he's also going to close with you. Um, and that is their turn. Uh, Medric, you're up. Oh, yeah, you're up. Yeah. Um, I'll get up and as slowly as possible. And you hear, you, you don't hear get the to move yet. No, uh, you get to. It's a, it's, it's a weird spell. Um, you have to make an attack first and then you get to move. Yeah. Well, so. Near me, and uh, I'm on the floor. <laughs> um. Well, I don't think the spell has to be, or the attack has to be a spell. Let me see here. No. Um, I... Must use an action before moving on its turns to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself. So if you have any melee, yeah. then they're with range. Um, I do not. Okay. Then uh, I'll, while I'll, the, while the command... I'm on top of my head and it's like, fuck, no, I'll attack the wall out of frustration. Well, well you're ordered to attack Silas. Yeah, you don't choose. You're oh, ordered sure, yeah. to attack Silas. Uh, but unfortunately, you're too far away. But I'm I'm prone, so I get up. Um, so you're prone. That's half your movement. And one, two, three. Okay. And then I get a wisdom save. You do. Please roll better than last time. <laughs> Eighteen. That is a success. And the glow in my eyes just. 
Oh, that's good. Like, Medrick's coming over to save me. <laughs> that's entirely <laughs> what it looks like. That weird crown thing, that was nothing. Totally. <laughs> and is that like all, all my, my, my entire turn? Or? Yeah, because that save is at the end of your turn. Okay. All right, Silas, you're up. We're all okay. gaggled in a corner now. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, well, look at that, a corner. Isn't that good? I can now use this spell. Uh, oh, what was the name of that? Uh, I cast Synaptic Static. Oh. Uh, centered on uh, the Dream Taker, because it has a 20-foot radius, which will hit everything down to uh, this, and not any of us. All right, Synaptic. This is one of the newer ones. Yep. Fun it times an... when, the, when the baddies corner us all, but that means that we can use big stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it's an int save. Okay. And on a failed save, they take 8d6 uh, psychic damage. Okay. And if they failed it, they have muddled thoughts for one minute. Uh, okay. Let me just check what they have. Now, probably most of them will save because it is magic, but... Uh, uh, okay. There's a chance. That's neat. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What's the save? Uh, int save difficulty 15. Okay. So we'll start with the big one. The Dream Taker. Fails. Wow. Uh, it's a very bad fail. I'm fine with the rest of the spell at this point. Um, yeah. And I didn't give them that okay uh what's the damage uh let oh, dang it where's the okay that's the dice now and i will um, have i think that's the only pr... oh no there is another person over here is going to fail uh as well uh yeah that's 8d6 so i'll roll 6d6 and then 2d6 okay so that's 23 Plus seven, so 30 psychic damage. Nice. Well, that definitely causes a concern. Um, for this guy, uh, we will be rolling. Uh, I don't remember how to roll disadvantage, so I will roll. Uh, I knew it at plus zero. So I roll twice, so they fail. Nope. They, uh, no, they'd have advantage, wouldn't they? Why? Oh. Uh, no, they would just have a straight roll. Uh, why would they have advantage? Uh, so I was, uh, I noticed the other demons all had magic resistance. Oh, no, it's this guy. But yeah. They have disadvantage. Uh, oh, they have disadvantage. Okay. Yep. Uh, which, uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. Well, actually, uh, they vanish. Yep. They had a nightmare. Uh, this one. So how many of them are going to die? That is that one with its advantage succeeds. So is that half damage for? Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo, uh or just all? Yeah, half on a successful save, so only fifteen. Okay. Uh, oops. Oh, there we go. So I didn't assign a, a particular amount to them, but they will do that. And then it is fifteen. So they're. This one is almost entirely gone of whatever essence it had. Um, this one is straight with a second roll. That's a that's a bad failure. Um, that one vanishes. So at least two have died so far. Uh, Silas is figuring that they're just waking up having had a bad nightmare. And that one, <laughs> uh, well, these are the ones that don't seem to have any substance to them. Uh huh. Um, that one fails, so it vanishes. Silas wasn't in the room when she turned one into a soul coin. Yep. Um, in fact, there are coins dropping, uh, actually. Yeah, that's true. There would be a, a soul coin dropping behind each of them. So I'm going to, I'm going to put them back on the map with an X mm. across them. And I seem to remember the first one that failed the save market gun. Oh, I got to remember that one. <laughs> the, the first one does not leave a coin. 
Um, cool. That one is, in fact, something else. Um, there we go. But these two and this one all leave coins. Uh, this uh, guy's not there. The one and, with the blue dot only took 15. Um, oh, you're right. He still has a little bit left. Okay. And you said it's 20 foot radius? Yep. The barb demon would get hit. Okay. Um, okay. Just barely. Uh, so that one. Uh, in save with advantage. Gets an 18. Yep. That's a save. Enough. So it's 15, was it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, that cleared the room out in a way. Um, and we're pretty sure that this is not 20 as well. Perfect. And there's nothing out there. Okay. Nope. I was very specific. All right, then. Um, um so then he... And she's also... Act. Sorry, the second half of that. Okay. Um, she is also stymied, I believe. Uh, she gets minus 1d6 to attack rolls, ability checks, and concentration checks. Uh, oh, muddled thoughts for one full minute. Okay. And she gets another save at the end of the turn. Okay. Or at the end of each turn. That works. Um, that was your action. <laughs> what else? Yep. Uh, bonus action is to spend two more charges from the staff to get that slot back. Um, and it's going to go over here. If I moved into the spot, can I use an item interaction to pick up the coin? So first off, you're going to get um, an, an attack of opportunity from Chioda. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just wondering, basically, a, a, an, intera an interaction act, uh, thing, the free thing we get once per turn, would let me pick up the coin or not? Yep, yep. Okay, yep. He so, will take the, the hit. So that is a 14 to hit. I don't think that hits. Nope, just yep. barely not. And you now have that coin. Okay, that is literally all he can do in a turn. All right, well, it's probably enough. Uh, so, let's see. Have fun, everybody. Um, I think Joda has a target in front of her. Um, you see the the look of unhappy happiness on her face as she does attack. Um, and you can kind of hear in this sort of weird, gravelly form of her voice, I'm so sorry about this, uh, as she proceeds to claw you three times. Uh, 18 to hit. Me or Medric? Uh, sorry, it's it's Annie. Because you were right outside the range of the other thing, so now it's like finish off that particular move. Yeah. Uh, 18 to hit, uh, 4 slashing. 23 to hit, 4 slashing. Wow, damage is minimal. And uh, a dirty 20. You already had, uh, that's the fourth one there. Uh, oh, never mind. No, no, that was attacking me. Ignore me. Uh, yes, that was the the uh, the bonus attack or the uh, reaction attack. So yeah, she does a little bit of clawing for uh, I think total of fourteen points of slashing damage. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh wait, no. Mm. What did she roll? No, that's eight and eight, and then four, four, and six are all the ones against you. No, that's fourteen. Um, doesn't have those. Doesn't have that. Oh, really? That's weird. <laughs> uh, okay, but I gave something to Geoda that I didn't give to the Dream Dreamweaver or Dream Taker, and I find that hilarious. Um, but that's okay. Uh, oh, sorry. She no, she does three claws. Yeah. Oh, uh, nothing of there. Nothing. Oh, sorry. I needed to check if that 23 was a, it was a 17. Okay. Not a problem. Um, and then she's going to action surge and do it again. Um, Gross. Yeah. Oh. Like you wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the nine doesn't hit. Fifteen might hit. Twenty-two probably hits. 
only the 22, and I'm going to Uncanny Dodge. There you go. None of the others were Rapid. really worth it. They were low damage, so the 13 makes sense. Uh, 13 divided by 2 would be 6. six. All right. Um, that is... No, not 63, 6. That, uh... <laughs> Let's kill myself. All right. Um, so, back around to Dream Taker. Now it is 6.03. Yep, I've got an action that will end the combat for the moment. Um, as oh, that sounds ominous. <laughs> the Dream Taker uh, grits her teeth through the synaptic static. You wish to rob me of all of my prizes? I think not. We shall move. And with that, um, she actually transforms the space uh, into a new space. And you find yourselves alone now with the Dream Taker in a um, very different space. It looks much more like the actual rocky ground of, of the world around you. Um, there, are the, there are a number of sort of rocky hillsides that are connected by chaotic running uh, paths and ramps. Um, all surrounding a sort of central, um, uh, I don't know what the term would be, but a, a central circular platform. Um, all of it seems decadent and broken. And the far end of this space, you see a massive uh, humanoid statue with arms outstretched. Uh, in, the, in the sort of seat of, of that statue by its feet is once more the Dream Taker um, at a far distance. Um, between um, these hills, you can uh, hear the running sound of lava. Beyond this area is nothing but, uh, but uh, smoke and shadow. And you get the sense that there exists nothing beyond this realm. Uh, there are so no signs. coming to the sound of doom music. There's, there's no signs of any of those dreamers that you had seen before. Um, as if they either do not exist in this realm or have been tucked away for safekeeping. Um, now, because of the circumstances of how we changed, your location becomes something under her control. Yeah. Do I still have my coin? You still have that one coin, yes. Sweet. Um, and that will be her action for the turn. Oh, what's the save? Int save, is it? The end of her turn. Just yep, to another int save continues. versus 15. Um, 22. So nope, the static gone. drops um, as she changes the rules. He, they, it, it's everything. Changes the rules once more. Uh, and yes, because we want to call it to a close for this particular night, uh, I will bring that to a close. We'll return back to this uh, this battle against this ancient, powerful spirit um, in its lair uh, next time. Thank you very much to my players no for, for jumping in and then finding, hey, these are NPCs. We can talk to them. Hey, they're weird. Let's talk to them more. Hey, this <laughs> is weird. Okay, let's run um, and fight. Uh, hope you had also, fun, I'm guys. Dead. <laughs> also, also dead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't expect that particular one, the secret, to come out as quickly as it did, but you guys uh, <clears throat> latched on to it. So there you go. Welcome, Meredith, to the group. Uh, I almost want to say, and Welcome now we introduce the new room. player. No, 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 new player. No, but Meredith does not have a player. Um, thank you very much, guys, for uh, playing this week. Um, thank Thanks you very for much running. for everyone who watched. If you are watching, you might be watching it live on Twitch on Sunday afternoons uh, every so often. Uh, hopefully we'll be back to an every every other week schedule now, but uh, life gets busy and crazy. Uh, you'll find it at twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 on, uh, that's ENCAF1, I realize I say it too quickly, uh, on Twitch um, on Sunday afternoons at three o'clock, so in two more weeks. Uh, or you can catch up on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles. There's a Campaign 2 playlist as well as a general playlist. You can watch the 70-something episodes from the previous one. Now we're up to 76 for this one. Uh, pretty amazing, guys. So 
Uh, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing.